Hello everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives. Um, I try my best to do something different with that every time, but it always ends up the same. Anyway, uh, what are we talking about this week? I'm talking about Navigator and file sharing. Again, no, I'm talking about them, how well they complement Ceph clusters. Uh, with our initial release of those not long ago, we really were focusing on single server, but I really want to stress to everyone, uh, both new prospective Ceph cluster builders or existing customers who have Ceph clusters, that these two modules are of great benefit to you. So um, I could sit here and talk till I'm blue in the face, but why don't I show you? So uh, join me at the, uh, at the screen here and we'll walk through this. I said we were gonna join me at my computer, but I lied to you, I wanna to talk to you first. Um, the, the Ceph deployment tools that exist are, are great. Like for example, we love Ceph Ants, but we forked that a couple of years ago and we've kind of melded it to our vision of how it works with our hardware. Um, but one thing that has always been lacking from the like kind of upstream Ceph deployment tools is proper support for Samba, or in other words, giving Windows file sharing to clients, which is a really big use case. A lot of people want to use a massive Ceph cluster and share to Windows clients. So um, with the lack of that in the upstream tools, you've kind of always had to spin your own solution if you wanted to do that. And it's there's plenty of information online, but as everyone knows, it'd be nice if there was just like a set deployment tool. So that's something that we did at 45 Drives a bit ago. We've built that into our playbooks, and that's one of the things that kind of really makes them stand out um, from other tools is we have good proper window sharing support with, with our Ceph deployment tools. Um, but we've taken that a step further, as I was saying, with by using Navigator and file sharing. Um, it just, yeah, takes a step further, makes it that much easier. So with that said, I want to paint a picture. This is what we're going to do today. So uh, you've gone and you deployed the cluster. You worked with 45 drives, or maybe you used our playbooks and you did it yourself. And you did the day zero stand up of the cluster. It's up, it's working, everything's ready to go, but like you don't have any file shares yet. You've got uh, your whole uh, organization waiting to use this new sh storage that you've created. They're all on Windows computers. They need their Windows shares. Um, You've been tasked with creating two shares. You want to make just a wide open public share that everyone at the company can get on, and you want to make a secure that maybe only some users can get on, and they put all kinds of stuff that not everyone can see, right? Now, a lot of organizations will have a lot more fine-grained kind of detailed shares from there, but we'll just keep it simple with that right now. So keep that in mind. That's what we're going to do today. That's the kind of picture where, uh, that I've painted. No. Um, yeah, so now we're ready. Let's jump on the screen. I've got a Ceph cluster deployed. I've got CephFS ready. I've got all the Samba services running, but I actually want to use the storage. So let's do it. All right, so now we're in the meat of the video, the fun stuff, the actual clicking through and showing you how things actually work instead of talking. And uh, I'm going to go back to the good old tech tip days, and I'm just going to throw a lot of information at you guys pretty quick. So uh, uh, let's get into it. So we're going to make a public share. We're going to make a secure share. We're going to take a look at Navigator to show uh, some insight of like the things on your Ceph file system. And then we're going to go over to the file sharing tab and we're going to make some shares out of this. We're going to connect to it. We're just going to put data on this thing. As you notice, uh, if you might have noticed, I'm joined to a domain here. This is our local internal development domain. And uh, that's how I'm going to handle my user authentication. This Windows VM that I'm on, this temporary VM, is... Uh, join to the domain as well. So that's what we're gonna connect to our shares from. So let's get into the fun stuff. Let's start with Navigator. So by default, mount CephFS is where our Ceph file system is mounted. Um, there's nothing in it right now, obviously. So we wanna make a share. We're gonna call this thing public share. That's easy. So you gotta first create that directory. And I wanna do my permissions window side. So I wanna use one of my, uh, my AD groups to actually have permission to change everything once we get over on the window. So I'm going to set domain admins as the group owner and I can give them right permission. I hit save and that's on that public. So from here, I can jump right over to file sharing. I can add a share, public, 
This is for everyone. And I'm going to give it the path that we just created. Mount CephFS and public. See, it, it'll guess for you what it is. We want to use Windows ACLs because we'll be using our um, Windows authentication through Active Directory to let people in and out of the share. And uh, we're going to check guest OK. We're going to add that share. And uh, well, let's put a file in it. So when we log into the share, we can actually see something. So let me go into my downloads and I'll drag this VirtualBox executable in here. So here's one of the nice kind of drag and drop pieces of Navigator. You can move files in this way quickly if you need to. Hit refresh and it'll show up there. Awesome. File sharing. We're ready to go. So let's connect to it. So I'm going to go to this PC. The IP of my box here is 125.140. And, and there's my public share. Um, I can click on it and there's VirtualBox. Very cool. If I cut and copy, I'm going to do a small file because we're on Wi-Fi with this machine and the transfers aren't great. 23.125.140, we're going to go back here, there's public again, let's copy this file into there. Crystal disk mark, wonderful. For some reason it thinks VirtualBox is zero kilobytes, um, that's not correct. Maybe that's just a bunk broken file I downloaded. Either way, Crystal disk mark's right. So we've connected the share, everyone can get in. If I logged in as another user, they'd be able to get in. If I wanted to change properties, change the security, and I want to decide, you know what? Um, well, actually, right now, only domain admins can get in. Sorry, that's, that was bad of me. So now I want to go domain users. I'm going to add them. I'm going to give them full control over it. I'm going to hit apply. It's going to say, you sure you want to do that at the root? And then it's going to fail on me. But that's OK, because it didn't. Good. Even failure fails sometimes. No, I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Task failed successfully is what I'm trying to say. Um, domain users has the full control it has, and it's mad at me because this VirtualBox file, for some reason, is busted. So I'm getting rid of it. Um, so that's what I was saying when I set that Windows ACLs and stuff, that the security, setting permissions on your Windows side, you now don't have to go back into Navigator. You don't have to go and change the underlying permissions of anything. Anyone in this domain admins group, it is configurable, but by default, this domain admins group can play with the, the security of, of, of the share. That's all well and good for public. If we go back into Navigator, let's refresh. That's there. Um, refresh this page really quickly. And then cool, this kind of gives us a little look at one of the interesting parts of CephFS and how we've included that into Navigator. But CephFS will report recursively everything in its current directory and everything beneath it. So what that means is you can have a quick glance and see how many files directories are in the directory you're in and even beneath it. So as you have a really, really, really big file tree, anyone who might know with a huge file system to see how much data is there or, or how many files or directories you have, sometimes it's a bit of a laborious task. You gotta run DU and it takes a while. Ceph just immediately tells you that. For example, this is 5.84. This tells you the total size of all the data in this directory. If you go deeper down your tree, it's all relative to that directory. It's a very unique thing that Ceph has that no other file system uh, shared file system does do. So uh, that's really cool. Um, while we're in here, why don't we take a look? Uh, you might notice max files and max bytes. You might say, Brett, can I set a quota? Yes, you can. So uh, like I said earlier, uh, a well-maintained or uh, maintained, yeah, whatever. Playing with the Ceph cluster, you've got two panels now. You've got uh, Houston and you've got the Ceph dashboard. So we're going to set quotas through the Ceph dashboard. So I go to File System, CephFS, Directories. Oh, and look, here's the directory I made, public. Cool. I want to put a quota on this. So let's set that quota to say, um, I got a bunch of terabytes in this cluster. Let's do TB. I'm going to save that. Boom, and it knows that now. So if I go back to Navigator and refresh, I now see that my quota on this directory public is one terabyte. That's that file in there. That's our public drive file sharing. 
you want to edit your share. Uh, maybe you want to give it advanced settings. Maybe you want to use shadow copy. You want Windows previous versions of something to, to uh, recover you should you fat finger a file or whatever. You can come in and hit populate shadow copy settings. It'll turn on Ceph snapshots. You apply. Everything's good to go there. We can connect back to our share again. Mind you, I do not have snapshots set up right now, so you're not going to see any previous versions. But what happens when you do this is um, you would go into, um, where is previous versions right now? It's in properties, sorry. I thought there was a shorthand on the left click. I blame Windows. They must have changed something on me. Um, but yeah, right now there's no previous versions available because I do not have uh, regular snapshots set up. But what happens there is like, say you're snapping every hour, you will get, I don't know, the past so many hours for everything you kept of that file. Very cool. Very easy to change. Uh, Want to get rid of it? Delete it. Apply. Done. So let's uh, move on to our next one. Let's actually, so public, everyone can get into public because I set domain users to. So uh, let's make another share, but a little locked down. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this uh, I'm going to call it secured. Now I'll call it secure. Um, I don't care about the description this time. I'm going to go mount CephFS secure. Notice I didn't make this directory yet, but it's okay because it'll prompt me. It'll say, are you sure? And I'll say, yep, add that share anyway. So now we're in. That's great. When well, we're not in, sorry, we just made the share. I'm going to go back to Navigator. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to let domain admins be the only group that can get in. Save that. So now let's connect to it. So this PC backslash 192, 168, 125, 140. So there's our secure share all set up. I can write to it, obviously, because I'm in the domain admin group. Security domain admin group. Good. That's root. And those two just always come with it. Um, so now let's show you how secure it is. Let me log in as a user who's not a domain user. So I'm going to go into uh, Chris Malone's account here. Logged in. Slash slash 192.168.125.140. 120, so there, if I go into public, Chris can do whatever he wants, obviously, because it's public. Now if I go into secure, Boom, does not have action or permission to perform this action. It cannot write. So there's our two shares. But those who are closely watching at home might be yelling at me right now and saying, yeah, he didn't have write permission, but he still got into the secure share. That's not what I want because there's a piece I missed, remember? Properties, security, everyone. Everyone still has read and write access. So what I want to do there is remove everyone. I want to hit apply, hit OK, hit OK. A little bug du duplicates it, hit refresh there. So now let's log back in as C Malone and see what happens. Because it's not a very secure share. Yeah, they can't write to it, but can they read it? Yeah, well then it's not secure, is it? So let's get in now. No, now they can't get in at all. Can I still get into public? Yep. And that's it. That's the end of the demo for today. All right, so that was a look at how Navigator and file sharing modules in Houston really complement Ceph clusters. So if you're a new prospective um, customer, user, uh, particularly anyone in the Windows world who, is, who lives in this environment, has all Windows computers, has been using Windows Server, um, who's been a little hesitant to maybe jump on something like Ceph because it can be a big learning curve, um, I hope this kind of showed you that it doesn't have to be that scary. You can do things at, through everything through the UI. As you noticed, active domain, I did a lot of Windows side things there because you can feel comfortable using non-Windows products in a Windows environment. And if you really noticed, I didn't touch the command line once. I don't think I've ever done that in a video. So I guess I'll leave it at that. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything, you know the regular old conclusion stuff. Um, like us, subscribe to us, comment, all that good stuff. Anyway. Guys, I'll see you next week.